one of the most exciting vehicles of the show. I've seen the headline that said this is a license to print money, this vehicle. <laughs> now, obviously, that, you, you like that idea, but this really does fit a niche for you. Uh, yes, it does. It uh, fills out our SUV and crossover portfolio for Cadillac. So that all started. The story started with the Escalade, which is now iconic, and then um, XT5. We've done really well with the world's largest segment of crossovers. XT4 we launched in November and it went straight to number one in its segment. And so now with XT6 we complete the family. So, so essentially if I want to, I want an Escalade, but it's, you know, an Escalade's too big for me. I don't want to have to park it and all that sort of thing. This is your ticket, right? It, well, yeah, it's nice, nicely between XT5 and, and Escalade. So you can get a three row, six passenger uh, with all the, the safety technology and all that in an XT6. So we, we do think it'll have broad appeal. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I gotta ask you about the economy. You're launching into uh, an economy that looks strong on on one hand, but on the other hand, there's you know there there's some trouble signals out there. Mm -hmm. You sell a lot of Cadillacs in China. Mm -hmm. You're feeling about that? Well, there's two questions in there. I'd say first, from the point of view of the U.S. market, I think generally the outlook uh, for this year, 2019, is not too different from last year. And I think we need to remind ourselves that. That would give us, you know, four near record industries in a row. So that's not bad. I would take that any day, right? Uh, all you can do is screw that up, right? I mean, you know, I well, you know, if, if you're in this industry, you're optimistic by nature, and you know, the the car park is still relatively old, uh, which would indicate uh, pent up demand, and a lot of the economic indicators are still very positive. So, uh, on we go. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, at the same time being responsible in terms of uh, our resource allocations and everything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, China, uh, you know, again, uh, this year, 2019, uh, pretty similar to last year, but, you know, it's the largest industry in the world, 28 odd million uh, vehicles. And uh, Cadillac there is growing faster than any luxury brand um, and uh, very desirable demographic of young buyers. A lot of them are first time buyers. So, you know, there's a lot to be enthusiastic um, about in China as well. And in some ways, other automakers concerned about China trade and tariffs and all of that, you make almost all of the vehicles you sell in China in China, correct? Uh, correct. And for Cadillac, you know, virtually all of them. Uh, and, you know, we're as we're investing here, we're investing there, so. So then yeah. in some ways you're insulated from kind of fallout from that, yes? Uh, yeah, I mean, and it's like any market. There's distinct headwinds and tailwinds in China. Um, and w like others, we're hopeful that, and, you know, there are indications that, you know, somehow this trade situation will get settled out, and I think that's beneficial for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a any negative fallout for you, whether it be steel prices or anything? Uh, not that hasn't been talked about before. You know, the Im general, general impact of commodity prices, that's some months ago, and, you know, the system ultimately... Um, adapts to those. Um, certainly terms could be more favorable, so we look forward to that. Uh, and lastly, uh, before you got here, uh, Cadillac was focused a lot on the sedans. Right. Um, since you've taken over, uh, the focus has been these vehicles that are seling, yes? Well, I, I, I wouldn't, uh, what is, the, the, the no, what's right? Mark Twain say? My rumors of my demise have been greatly exaggerated, so you know, while we're doing this, we're also in the sedan market. So, you know, some of the, we, we, we talk about a new vehicle launch every six months for the next three years. Amongst those are uh, our new sedans as well, including V-Series. So um, as much as the mix has shifted towards SUVs and crossover, there's still sizable and attractive and important sedan markets that we intend to um, stay in as well. But, but it's great news for us that we filled out the SUV and crossover. Right. Family. And last, I've got to ask you about electrics, because yeah. it appears now that Cadillac is going to be the flagship for GM's electric yeah. development. I, I've heard that, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but seriously, we're, we're really excited about that. And there, there's a number of different, uh, uh, you know, story arcs that come together there. Cadillac has always been at its best when it's leading in terms of technology and innovation. And uh, the, the, the industry itself is... Uh, facing an impending shift towards electrification and automated driving. So uh, we're thrilled to have Cad Cadillac leading the parade from a General Motors uh, perspective on that. And uh, we'll be making news during the auto show. We started that with our um, investor day on Friday in New York. 
of the role that we're going to play on the rollout of what we call our BEV3 um, architecture. The first one of those will be a Cadillac crossover, um, kind of later on in the current uh, product rollout that we're talking about now. So we're mm -hmm. super excited about that. <laughs> uh, I don't know how old you are, but I feel like you're sort of a contemporary of mine. Uh, and people my you age... You look a lot younger than me. <laughs> well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> uh, this, you know, some of us of this age are like, I just don't know if I see the electric and if yeah. I don't see the self-driving. Yeah. Uh, tell me something that makes, uh, makes the skeptic say, yeah, I sort of get that. Yeah. Well, um, if you ask people why are they concerned about or where are their doubts on electric, right? Um, range comes up. How far can I go? And, uh, and if you look at what's happened, the range of electric vehicles is just in increasing leaps and bounds over time. So our Chevrolet Volt, uh, uh, or sorry, Bev EV has a range now, what, 238 miles. Uh, we'll be in the 300s and beyond before you know it. And that's more than enough to cover uh, your, your most of your driving needs, uh, charging. Uh, we announced uh, um, a collaboration that we're in that will give our customers access to 10,000 charging points across the United States. Starting now, um, people are concerned about where charging is and uh, how long does it take. And, and the, the speed of charging continues to increase as the battery technology and the charging and the software and, um, and all of that. So I think a lot of the barriers to adoption that if we were 10 years ago, uh, a lot of those are starting to, to move in a, in a, in a, um, in a direction that will be favorable to adoption. Uh, and then you got to step back and say, we can, d from a, a, a product point of view, <coughs> excuse me, we can do some pretty amazing things with electric vehicles. Um, putting the, the battery pack in the floor and, you know, we're dealing with um, electric engines that we can move around, drive motors, um, and they're just plain fun. This instantaneous torque when you tip into the throttle. So I, I think there's tons to be excited about with, uh, with electric vehicles. And we're at one of those um, transition points that you only see generationally in any sector. So thrilled to be here. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah.